I saw her come in this way. Yeah, this must be the tenth time that little heifer's run off. Well, I'll find her. Now you going back and rest. I may get her and cook her for supper. Yeah, too little. Chuck wagon sure gonna look good, huh? Yeah. Yeah, okay. See ya. You know that brand. Drop your gun. Get off the horse. I'm sure we can solve it without using these. Chico, hey. Angelo. It would be a mistake to kill that man there. Woman, do not get in the way. You know the winter was hard. We need food, not a woman's foolish talk. I don't speak as a squaw. I've dreamed of the wolf, and the great prophet of the Paiute knows my name. We were sent to find the horses that graze these mountains. Two of us are on foot already. I left the herd a day's ride to the north, and I have spare horses. Those two are broken to the white man's taste, but they're yours if you'll have them. The last one isn't broken yet. But I'd like to trade him to you for that heifer. Well, ma'am, that's not a very good trade, but you got a deal. You know, are we near Cartwright land? You're on it, ma'am. I'm Horse Cartwright. Well, I've heard that the Cartwrights are honorable men and friends of the Paiute. I was on my way to your ranch to sell my horses. I did not know who you were. No harm done. Would you trade more beef for the horses that they'll catch? Absolutely. You get them? Send word to me at our roundup camp, and I'll meet you back here, and we'll discuss the details. I am called Bear Hunter. You are welcome at our camp anytime. Rest here for a moment. My shoulder's gone a bit sore. Not at all. How'd you injure that shoulder, anyhow? Well, to tell you the truth, 
I got a bit careless trying to break that horse. I got myself thrown. It's just a cut, but I think it might be trying to get infected. You know, we might ought to have a doctor take a look at that. Oh, no, that won't be necessary. I'm sure it's going to be all right. Well, it ain't going to hurt nothing. And the nearest one's in Virginia City. Well, I don't, uh, I don't think I could make it that far right now. Well, we can't camp here, and that's for sure. It'll be freezing here in another hour, so we can go on down to low country. I know a good place to camp down there. Well, I'll be grateful to you for the company, Mr. Cartwright. <sighs> Miss O'Donnell, my name is Hoss. Aaron. Here, you rest a spell. I'll go fill this candy, and then we'll be on our way. Fine. Shoulder bother you? A little. How hard did that old pony throw you, anyhow? Not hard enough to break anything, but I don't think I'll be forgetting him for a while. Oh, <laughs> man, no. Listen, I'll fix something to eat. It ain't gonna be too tasty, but it'll be filling. I got some jerky and some beans back here. Well, wait, wait. Why don't I just try to catch us a dinner? Like what? Pheasant or quail or both. Well, that's fine with me, but I ain't seen nothing running or flying. Well, it never hurts to try. That's going to be interesting. Is there anything I can do to help? Just keep your fingers crossed. Oh. Hey. Oh. Let me take a look at that shoulder. Yeah. Boy. That thing ain't infected. It's sure trying. You know, maybe we shouldn't stop. Maybe we ought to keep going, huh? I don't think my horse is up to it. I've been pushing him pretty hard. The fact is, I, I'm i not up to it. Yeah, well, you sure can't go out catching any game, that's for sure. Well, it doesn't take much muscle to set a snare. Huh. We're going to need a fire. Right. I'm aiming for Sue Stew. Sue Stew? What's that? Rabbit. Oh. Out that jerky, doesn't it? <laughs> you know, this is the first coffee I've had since mine ran out last winter, and it smells like nectar. You said you wintered with the pilot. You lived with Indians all your life? Only the best part of it. Did the Sioux take you when you were a baby? Uh, no, no. I was, um, I was taken to the Sioux as a child by my father. Well, when my mother died, he had no idea how to go about raising a daughter. <laughs> So he raised me like a son. I took to it like a duck to water. I still do, I guess. Why did, uh, why did your Paul take you to the Sioux? Well, he was looking for freedom. And when he discovered the Sioux, he thought he'd found it. It's funny, I never thought of freedom as being that hard to come by. My parents had to pay a price for it. You see, they were raised in Ireland under the British occupation. You were born in Ireland? No, I was born on a ship. They wanted the first land I'd see to be a free one. And then we came ashore at Massachusetts. And there was a sign in every window saying, no Irish need apply. So we headed west. How did you get with the pilot? And what's this thing about a prophecy or whatever it was? I've been talking too much. You're good company, Hoss. I'll just take these down and clean. Here, here. Oh. Hey, you got a fever. Come on, Aaron. Get in. It's all You're right. You're gonna have to get some rest. Come on. It's really all right, Austin. I just hope it's not too late. Let me fix this bed down for you. I'll get it. I'll get it. Just take it easy. You relax. Thank you. Here. I'll be fine. I really will be fine. All right. Let me get you some cover. You're going to have to keep that night air off. There. That ought to keep the chill off. I promise. Yeah. 
promise you, if it is a fever, it'll be gone by the morning. I hope so. Thank you, Harvey. You get some rest. Red man, white man. Red blood, white snow. Aaron. Aaron. You're gonna be all right. You hear? You're gonna be all right. I'll, I'll get you to the doctor. I'm not glad to see you, Paul. Her name's Erin O'Donnell. What is she, some kind of white Indian? What happened to her? She got bucked off by a horse. She's got an infected shoulder. It's bad. She's running a high fever. Figure she needs a doctor or a medicine man. Oh, shut up. Give me a hand. Gotta get her to a doctor. <laughs> How is she? I'm sure she's felt better. She asleep? You ever try to sleep through having a shoulder cauterized? She survived that. Now she's got to beat the fever. What do you think, Doc? We'll know by morning, one way or the other. I'll send my wife out to stay with her tonight. Someone should be with her. I'll go on up there right now. If she gets through this, she'll be laid up for a while. Hello, friend. Hello, yourself. I've caused you a great deal of trouble. Oh, you're not to be sorry about. Don't be silly. The main thing is you get some rest and get to feeling better. I'd forgotten how good linen feels next to your skin. I wonder if you'd open the window just a little. Erin, it's... It's a fever that's making you feel uncomfortable. It, it, I don't think you need the draft. It's not the fever. It's just being closed in. The fact is, I just don't like being closed in. Well, I'm afraid you're going to have to put up with it this time. Oss, if you don't do it, I will. Hey, wait a minute. Settle down. I'll open the window. That'd settle it. Say, you've got a mind of your own, haven't you? Oscar, right? What an uncommon man you are. How have you managed to survive in this savage world? Open. 
you like it? Like it? I've forgotten how it feels to wear a dress. If you'll excuse me, I'll, I'll go and change. I hope I remember how to put this on. Come in, Mr. Murray. Afternoon, Ben. Afternoon. Huh? Hi, Murray. How are you? Well, well, awesome. Well, I'd like you both to meet my niece, Mary Beth Johnston. Hi, Mary. I'm from Louisville, Kentucky. <laughs> yeah, Kentucky. Mary Beth's going to be visiting us for a month or so. Well, isn't that nice for you? Uh, sit down, ladies. Please. Oh, thank you, Ben. Come on, Mary Beth. Thank you, Ben. Thank you, right. ladies. Like some coffee? Well, that'd be real nice, huh? Oh, uh, Ben, uh, I... Isn't Joseph here? No, no, he's with the Ronda. Oh, I'd so hope Mary Beth could meet both your sons. Ben... And he oh, says, uh... your other son's name is Little Joe. Well, I think that's just darling. Yeah, well, you'll meet him sometime. Right now, I've got to talk over some business with Ben. Yeah. Nothing wrong with the Ronda, is it? No, no, it's coming along fine. And uh, if we want it to stay that way, we've got to decide what we're going to do about those Paiutes. Pilots when we're near here. Besides that, they're, you're just after some wild horses anyhow. They'll come back. They've had a taste of good beef, and they'll come back for more. Unless we let them know that they're not wanted. Clint, you're making a mountain out of a mole here. We haven't had any Indian trouble here for a long time. That's what my brother thought until he and his family were wiped out at Brinker's Ford. Donald, this is Mr. and Mrs. Murray and their niece, Miss Johnston. I do. It's a pleasure, I'm sure. How'd you do? I think we better talk privately. Come on. Come on, have a seat. Well. It's a nice little dress. You make it yourself, my dear? No, I, uh... Never mind. A few little alterations here and there, and it'll do nicely. Well, I'm afraid I don't know how to sew. You should be grateful to the Cartwrights for giving you a chance to return to civilization. Well, I am very grateful to the Cartwrights. But I came here from as old a civilization as your own. And an honorable one. I uh, suppose those shoes are comfortable. Oh, yes, very, very. Is it true you all have to chew the leather soft to make them comfy? Sometimes. As it happens, these were a gift from my uncle. Your uncle? Yes, Bull Buffalo. He was a Sioux medicine man. Oh. It must be very difficult for a white girl to uh, protect herself among people who buy and sell women like animals. Miss Murray. No, it's not hard. When young men brought strings of war ponies as a bride price, my father had only to turn them down politely. My father never had to depend for an income on how many horses he could trade for me. How fortunate for your father. <laughs> Come along, Mary Beth. Smile. Good day. Goodbye, ma'am. Clinton, I would like to go home. <laughs> oh, Hoss, I'm sorry. Yeah, so am I. For her. <laughs> I saw the way Hoss looked at her. She's got him wrapped right around her little finger. She wouldn't mind marrying one of the Cartwrights, that's for a fact. You probably don't mind having a bunch of Indians hanging around your place, but it sure makes it hard on my family. Well, I'm real sorry, Mr. Murray. But if Hoss wants it that way, that's exactly the way it's going to be.
Well, I'm glad you can laugh. You weren't upset by them. Oh. Paul, she can take care of herself. Don't you worry about that. Oh. Darling people, my father would have called the Murrays. They're the kind that would have enjoyed the Sandy Wash massacre. Yeah. Indian women and children shot, bodies left in the snow. What a needless tragedy that was. I turned and left the Dakotas. I ran like a thief. I'd best go up and rest. Well, you must be tired. Yeah. We'll call you for dinner. Oh, thanks again for this. Oh, yeah. Well, I'm sorry I forgot about the shoes. I like these shoes. But Murray won't do so secret. Oh, you know Murray. Yeah. Sees Paiutes under every rock. No, no. He just saw the whole Paiute nation riding over the hill in full war paint. There was a bear hunter and a couple of other braves now. I know, happened. I know, but he thinks she's going to bring a whole lot more around. Well, Aaron was raised with the Sioux and wintered with the Pirates, so it's understandable that a few of them may come around to say hello or something, but Murray can't really believe that they're going to put together a war party, can he? Oh, yes, yes, he believes that, and he thinks that they're going to steal all our beef, and he just can't forget what happened at Brinkus Ford when he lost part of his family, and but that's only half my concern. The other half is Aaron. She's all right, Paul. But for whatever reason, she ran away from the Dakotas. She left the Piutes. And now the first time she meets anybody outside our family, she runs into hatred and prejudice. And... You think you, you think she might try to run away again, huh? Well, once you start running, it gets easier every time. I'll tell you this. She tries. I'll do everything I can to keep her from it. I'm not surprised. Hoss, don't you be surprised if you wind up being hurt. Paul, I know you're concerned, but you needn't be. I know how I feel, and I know what I want. And what's troubling you? Well, it's not what Murray and them like him think of her, but it's what she thinks of us that concerns me. Hey, this Aaron. You looked at a lot of horse flesh, but that little pony of yours is one of the prettiest ones I ever saw. That is the best horse that I ever stole. Stole? Well, I stole his mother when she was in foal with him from a crow's camp. That's when the Sioux gave me the cool feathers that you saw, as a sign that I had medicine. Speaking of medicine, you never did tell me about that prophecy. What was that all about? The Paiute prophet said that I was the wolf's child, born to fight and die for the Indians. Do you believe that? When I was with the Sioux, I did. But now I'm not so sure. What are you sure of? I'm sure of one thing. I'm tired of being a curiosity. Do you know what I mean? I'm sure you do. When I look at you, I see a man with wisdom, of great strength, who prefers to be gentle. on moving straight ahead. Instead of up and down, you'll get where you want to go faster. Oh, that's funny. That's very funny. That may not be the meanest jughead I've ever seen, but he'll do. Well, maybe you haven't appealed to his better nature. Oh, is that what you did? Just before he threw you? 
You made your point. But it did give me time to consider my mistake. I think I got his number now. Oh, would you mind letting me in on it before he kills me? Well, you might be able to talk me into it. My father got along with the Sioux very well. Probably because he never tried to change them. Hmm. Well, what did you folks do when the Sioux were moved to the reservation? Well, my father had died by then, and I, uh, I started horse hunting. Hmm. There's something you got a right to know. I was arrested by the army after the Brinker's Fort raid. They put you in jail? Oh, no. Into a hospital storeroom. Manacled to a cot. No windows. No light. No air. And what charge? I never did know exactly. I never saw a courtroom or a jury or a judge or the officer who ordered it. I think it had something to do with the prophecy. Well, they had no legal right. I was in no position to argue the point, Mr. Cartwright. Excuse me, please. I'm going to look in on Jughead. It ain't hard to figure out why she don't like being cooped up, is it? She hardly touched a dinner. I reckon she can't get her mind off of the little hungry youngins in the Piute camp. Although it's spring, there should be plenty of game for food. Oh, yeah, small game. That ain't a, enough to feed a tribe, no, just rabbits. Well, if, if we're that short of food in the mountains, we may be in for some serious trouble. Well, we're that short. Of course, they got the cattle that they'll get from the horse trade, but that ain't enough either. I wish you could feed them all. Yeah. Well, I think I'll go ahead and see how she's doing on that gray jug head. Well, the gray that you traded you for the habit? Yeah. You better stay away from him. Candy says he'll chew your arm off. I think I'll go ahead and see if she's all right. You figuring on taking a little night ride? No, I'm just getting acquainted. I've been working with him a little every day. Is music a part of your system of getting acquainted? I mean, you were whistling. Oh, I guess it is. Sort of a catchy little tune. Is it Irish? I. When I was a child, we'd sit by our fire in the evenings, and my father used to sing all the old songs. And the rolling hills of Ireland would spring up before my eyes. That's uh, downright poetic. You should have heard my father. He was a teacher and a proper poet. Yeah. You know, it's, it's funny. I, I've always had a real tough time with words. It's, as a matter of fact, I'm having a heck of a time right now. There's something I need to tell Pause. you. It's, well, what I'd like to say is... Pause. Don't be confused by a pretty spring day. Oh, I, I ain't confused, and I, I hope you're not. Even in a dress, I don't fit in your world. Aaron, let me tell you something. You ain't exactly the best judge in the world of how a man feels, and particularly this one. I think you're as pretty as a picture in that dress. And you will fit in my world just fine. I don't know, Hoss. I just don't know. Maybe, maybe I'm like Nightwind. I've always run free. I mean, he, he's never even been in a stall before, nor on a picket line. Aaron. I mean, 
not even at night. All I'd ever have to do was wake him up and turn, and he'd be there. Aaron. Even when it was so dark, I could hardly see him. I think that's why I called him night. Aaron, night. please. There's something I gotta tell you, and, and you gotta listen to me. I wanna protect you. And I wanna look after you. And I wanna make sure that nothing ever happens to you again, like happened up in the Dakotas. I wanna. I wanna be near you and with you. Are you sure? Yeah, I'm sure. Boss, I was looking for your paw, but as long as you're here, I'll talk to you. And no apology for interrupting. What do you want, Mr. Murray? I just saw a stinking Paiute skulking around the Roundup camp, Hoss. I'm not going to put up with that kind of talk, Mr. Murray. I invited that Indian here. We're going to trade him some beef for some horses. You're a fool, Hoss. My best advice, I think, to you is to go on home. Well, maybe, uh, maybe this will interest you. Wired a friend of mine in the cavalry up the Dakotas about this O'Donnell woman. My well, man, she's she's an insurrectionist. She's a traitor. She she's worse than a squaw. Aaron. is going to be my wife, Murray. And you best keep that in mind from going out. Take me a couple of days to cut my stock out of the herd. Just make sure that he keeps his pet Indians away from camp until then. Go on, get out of here. son is going to marry, but you... you should find an interesting way to tell me. Yeah, we're going to do that. Hey, uh, you still got some of that good French champagne? I, I think a celebration's in order, huh? Yeah, sure. Sure is. Don't worry about Murray. He's just an unpleasant man. Unpleasant? That's a mild word for it. What makes him hate me? Irrational. It's, it's become a disease with him. Are you afraid of him, Aaron? Yes. I guess I am. Well, you don't have to be from now on out. The world is full of Murrays. All my life, each time I've met him, each place, I've been scared of all of them. Well, that was before. Yeah. Come on, let's get this champagne. If you don't mind, I'll be along in just a minute. Anything you say. why you should leave them and you are not like they are my father was once i can learn 
to live within walls, behind locked doors, where you cannot feel and smell the change of the wind, you would wither and choke on bitterness. I am not an Indian. You are more Indian than you are white. The men who were just here, they know that. And they hate you for it. He wants to kill you for helping the Paiute. He would have to kill my husband first. You have no husband. You must have heard what Hoss Cartwright said to his father. I heard. But I did not hear you. Then hear me now. He is to be my husband. Do not forget the prophecy. you do that? Well, the secret is that when you talk to him, you got to know what to say. Hey, how's the shoulder? You ready to go for that ride? <laughs> ride? Yes, ride. After two weeks indoors, I'm raring to go. Well, good, let's go. Move. Well, we'll deliver the cattle tomorrow. There's a big box canyon back up north of here. I'll put them in there so they won't get mixed up with your horses. She will be your, your woman? Yeah. My wife. It is hard to think she will leave my people. Well, she won't ever be any farther away than she has been the last couple of weeks. Very far away. A strange land to her does not belong there. She can belong there. No. Your people hate her. We believe she has been touched by the spirits. She told me all about the prophecy, but maybe if she's married to a white man, it will come true. It will find her. Until then, I wonder if she would be happier with those who dishonor her or with those who love her. I love her, Bear Hunter. Open that dam to get the 
cattle together out of that herd. Curry! We got big trouble. What's the matter? It's Murray. He told his crew he was going to take uh, some picked men and go pay the Paiutes a visit. He knows where that camp is, boy. I better get out there. Well, uh, Candy, you and I will ride out to Murray's place. If he's not there, we'll meet you at the camp. All right, I'll get my things. I'll get your horse. Karen, maybe you better stay here. The Paiute wouldn't be there, hostile one for me. Count four. Four men, four rifles, and bullets to waste. Until you came, we were three. Only two rifles. Now we are five, and we have four rifles. We'll have two more pretty soon, Paul and Candy. If they are not here soon, they may find only bodies. Yeah, I know what you mean. If they got one man up on that high country up there, they'd have us right in their sights, wouldn't they? They will get one there. On the other hand, if one of us got up there, we'd have them in the same position, wouldn't we? I'm going to try for that range. Hoss! Hoss! Hoss, they'll kill you! That's what they're trying to do now. You stay here. I care for him, Baron. I could have written for help. He would not let you do that. I think he fears the prophecy. I think you also fear it. That's why you left the Sioux and the Paiute because no, of it. No, I do not fear it. The prophecy was an old man's muttering. It has no more meaning than the wind. Just don't say. I'm going to divert their fire. the Koya. Squaw gonna tell me what to do. Murray! Got it!
hands, my weapons, to be buried with me. Wait. Well, he, he's gonna have to wait a long time, because you're gonna be all right. You hear? Don't waste precious time. Oh. Ah. Oh. I'm gonna take you back home, you hear? I can't... I can't go back there without you. I, I can't go back alone. She's gonna run off and leave me. And now I wish to God she had. bring a top price. There's a shortage of good saddle stock around here. Uh, that's good. I still know we're going to make a profit. Now, if it's all right with you, we'll uh, have the auction day after tomorrow. That'll give me time to get the handbills down. Yeah. Oh, uh, I'll take care of the handbills. Uh, yeah. Paul's got a good friend here in town that's in the printing business. All right. Day after tomorrow, then. All right, Jim. Here you go. Well, how soon can we get started? Well, I thought we could get over to the hotel and get cleaned up. Have ourselves a meal that hasn't been cooked over a campfire. Yeah, well, look, we, we've got three hours of daylight left. If we started right away, we can get to the Ponderosa by Friday. We, we start moving that herd. On Monday, right after the Saturday night dance. He read our minds. Yeah, he's getting pretty good at it. Of course, he's had a lot of practice. What about it? Ah, sure. Sure. Go ahead. Good deal. Hey, and uh, say hello to the widow Manning for me, will you? <laughs> question the other day. We just stopped by to get your answer. I told you then and I'll tell you now the answer is no. The lady says she hasn't changed her mind. You had a whole week to think about it. I was sure you'd be seeing the light by now. Now she's told you she ain't changed her mind. Why don't you let her alone? Hey. I wouldn't. You might get hurt. Mrs. Manning? Ben. Ben Cartwright, what are you doing in Gunlock? Well, I uh, came here to mix a little business with pleasure. First of all, to say hello to an old friend, <laughs> and then to order some handbills. The lady's busy. Why don't you take a walk and come back later? <laughs> Thank you. 
like that. Not at all. I'm terribly sorry, Ben. Well, that's not your fault, Ruth. Uh, you better not do that, Mr. Cartwright. You might mess up that bandage, huh? Well, it's not too bad, is it? Nasty bruise. Small concussion. Sure, I'd like to know who those two were. Later on, eh, Mr. Cartwright? Now, if any dizziness or nausea occurs, I want you to send someone for me at once. And I want you to spend the next 48 hours in bed, Mr. Cartwright. Oh. We'll see that he does. All right. This way out, ladies. Can't I talk to him for a moment? Well, certainly you can. Tomorrow morning. There's a bell on the table if you want anything. Oh, I'll be all right. Thank you, Ruth. Good morning, good morning. What are you doing? Well, I was, uh, I was looking for my hat. It's right over there. Oh, thank you. Dr. Adams said you were to stay in bed for at least... At least 48 hours, but he was being overcautious. Oh, is uh, Mrs. Manning up? Up and gone hours ago. Oh, and well, then I'll see her at the clarion. Now, wait a minute, wait a minute. You gotta eat. You gotta keep your strength up. You wouldn't want all this food to go to waste. Hmm. Well, you, uh, you make it almost impossible for me to refuse. Mrs. Manning says you were her best man when she and Willard were married. Yes, that's right. Ruth has been running the paper for three years now. She works much too hard. Hmm. I have the feeling that you'd be lost without the clarion. That's what she says. But I know better. Ruth has had more than her share of trouble. What kind of trouble? It ain't right for a housekeeper to say, Mr. Cartwright, but if you're the friend I think you are, you'll see that she gets a lot of help. Well, Mr. Dobbs. Just where are you going? Oh, I'm going to work, same as usual. You feeling all right? Sure. You don't look so good to me. Kind of green. Sickly. Be a good idea if you went home and went to bed. As green as you look. If you go to work now, you might not get through the day. Maybe you're right. You got the word, eh? One scared little man. Just pack up and leave as fast as you can. Call for a drink. Come on. All right, turn around. You're under arrest. Hand over your guns. I don't see any star on you. Yeah, no marshal's badge either. This is a citizen's arrest. I hand over your guns. Come on. Come on. Mister, you're making a big mistake. Let's move to the sheriff's office. All right, move. How you doing, Sheriff? Howdy. Took these off Montana Slim. Man spends his life at crooked gambling. You'd think he'd do a better job of mocking cars, wouldn't you? <laughs> oh, 
What can I do for you two? Well, the man says we're under arrest. He's holding a gun on us to prove it. The devil he is. I know Walt Leak, Jeff Cotton. I didn't catch your name. Cartwright. Ben Cartwright. Thought I was a law around here, Mr. Cartwright. Since you're doing my work for me, maybe you better tell me what this is all about. Assault and battery, trespassing and destruction of property. This assault, who's it on? Me and a couple of others. You willing to sign a complaint? That's why I'm here, Sheriff. All right. Your turn. What do you two got to say? Nothing. Except he's wrong. He sure is. Well, there you are. Two against one. You take this to court, the judge will throw it right out in the street. Sheriff, I have witnesses. Do what the man wants, Sheriff. Let Judge Tabor decide who's telling the truth. It's your fault. It's not hard. I'm wearing my nerves on the outside of my skin. I've got page two locked up. I'll have to change that. Two of the ads have been canceled. Kelly's Mercantile and... The Eagle Saloon. You knew about that? I guess. Well, Leek was waiting on the sidewalk this morning and told me to go home. That's the reason I was late. I went around back so they wouldn't see me come in. After yesterday, I can hardly blame you. You're supposed to be in bed. The doctor said... I know, said... I, I know what the doctor said, but right now I need both you and Henry in court in exactly ten minutes. In court? But why? Well, I'm signed a complaint against Cotton and Leak. They're going to stand trial. I need you both as witnesses. Well, I guess you better get your hat, Henry. Well, you, you two don't need me. I mean, the two of you will be enough. We do need you. Three will be better than two. Well, I guess I shouldn't be surprised. You always did face trouble head on. Well, Ruth, I just can't let those two get away with it. It isn't only those two. I guess Henry doesn't want to testify. Why not? Because he's afraid. They're trying to take the clarion away from me, Ben. That's what this is all about. Who's trying? The man who owns just about everything else in Gunlock. You'll meet him in a few minutes. Circuit Court, Gunlock County, now in session. Judge Seth Tabor presiding. Well, everybody's here. I guess we can get this little matter cleared up. Mr. Lee? My partner and I are trying to buy the clarion. No secret about that. Mr. Cotton stepped into the back shop to take a look at the equipment. I did shake hands with the little feller. Maybe I squeezed too hard, but I didn't mean to hurt him. Mr. Cartwright walked in in the middle of things, and he didn't know what was going on. I slipped and grabbed this case, and it fell down, and uh, the next thing I know, this Cartwright's trying to kill me. <laughs> Cartwright went pure loco. <laughs> he uh, knocked Mr. Cotton down and then tried to draw on it. <laughs> Mrs. Matting, had both these gentlemen made you an offer for the clarion? Yes, and I told them... You answered my question. Thank you. Mr. Cartwright, did you knock Mr. Cotton down? Yes, I did. And did you draw on him? No, I did not. Oh, I see. Well, there seems to be a difference of opinion on that point. However, it appears to the court that there was no real harm done. 
that the cause of the trouble was, was an accident and misunderstanding. The court finds the defendants innocent of all charges. However, as a gesture of goodwill, Mr. Cotton and Mr. Leake are willing to pay for all damages, including... Mr. Taylor, there was no accident. Mr. Cotton deliberately pushed that type down onto the floor. Dobbs was the only one close enough to see what happened. If it happened like you said, why didn't you bring him along to testify? Well, Mr. Cartwright? He didn't wish to testify. And I'll tell you why, Mr. Tabor. Because he's afraid of those two thugs of yours. Mrs. Manning, this is a court of law. You'll speak when asked to only. These two couldn't even afford to buy a notebook, let alone a newspaper. <laughs> they work for you. Mr. Cartwright! I find you in contempt of court. That will be $20 or 20 days. You're absolutely right, Mr. Tabor. Contempt is what I feel. Forty dollars or forty days. Yes, sir. Fine turnout today, Ben. One of the best I've ever had. Men who own the big ranches are here. They need horses and can afford to pay for them. You should do very well. Mr. Cartwright! I didn't expect you to still be around. Oh, Mr. Tabor, I've got some horses up for auction here. Oh, I see. The handbill says 10 a.m., Mr. North, and it is now 5 after. Time to get started. <laughs> well, I guess it's time. Gentlemen, ladies, it's my pleasure to offer at auction 10 of the finest horses we've seen in Gunlock in a long, long time. All right, let's show them how that black beauty moves. Well, there's our first offering, that handsome black gelding, a prime example of Ponderosa bred saddle stock. Now, there's a real stockman's horse, fast, Nimble. One dollar. I haven't asked for a bid yet, Mr. Tabor, but if I had, you have to be joking. I'm not joking. I bid one dollar for that black gelding. All right, I have a dollar bid. Well, in spite of what Mr. Tabor says, a one dollar bid for that fine animal has to be a joke. Come on, gentlemen, let's be serious. You know that horse would be a bargain for $100. All right, who'll open the bidding at 75? Do I hear 75? $65. 60 55 I bid $1. Either get a higher bidder or sell me that horse. Mr. Tabor, you can't be serious. You advertise these horses for sale at auction to the highest bidder. No ifs, ands, or buts. Now get a higher bidder or sell me that horse. Who'll give 55? $50. Do you want to tell him or do you want me to? The tide ride. A man puts something up to be sold at auction. He can't bid on it himself. Unlock county law. How long has this law been in the state? A oh, long, long time. More than two years. And if the lady has any idea of bidding for you, she better have the money in her purse. Yep. Cash in the barrel head. That's the law, too. Have a dollar bid. One dollar. Going. Going. Hold to Mr. Tabor for one dollar. Bring out the rest of them. I'm in a horse buying mood.
knew about that auction law, but I had no idea that Dave would use it the way he did. It's not your fault. Anyway, it's not the end of the world, so don't worry. You bred and raised those beautiful horses, brought them all the way up here. Tabor stole them. Oh, he, he bought them. Oh, I admit that a dollar a head could be considered robbery, but it's legal and binding. Oh, Ben, why did they do this? I didn't mean to cry. I don't want to cry. I won't cry. Well, it might do you good to cry. You'd better swear, and I doubt if you have enough words for that. Living here in Gunlock and running the Clarion, you'd be surprised at the words I know. You sure that Tabor's responsible for this? I know he is. He ordered it to be done while he and Cotton and Leek and that tame sheriff of his were at the auction where everyone could see them. So you know, but you can't prove, huh? I know or suspect a lot of things about Mr. Tabor I can't prove. Why does he want the clarion? Because he wants everything he can get his hands on. Every ranch, every freight wagon, every stick of lumber. Henry, what happened? Hmm. Who did it? Nobody, ma'am. I just sort of stumbled and fell out in the street. Look at this. Good tight, thrown all over the floor. Anybody who did this ought to be tarred and feathered. I'm right. Sorry, ma'am. Look, the reason I come is I just got word that my brother's mortal sick. I gotta leave Gunlock, ma'am. It's all right, Henry. I understand. You, uh... Want your pay. Oh, Ma'am, if it wouldn't trouble you, it sure'd help me out. Of course. Right away. I uh, hope your brother gets well soon. Me too, ma'am. Thank you very much. Much obliged. the end of the paper. Well, we'll get another printer. I've had six printers in the last four months. You know, one of the printers didn't stay long enough to even say hello. Some of Mr. Tabor's friends met him at the stage. Well, I've got newspaper friends in San Francisco and Virginia City. And no, Ben, even if I wanted to go on, I couldn't. When a person dies, there's a funeral, a eulogy, mourners. A newspaper dies. Nothing. Well, the clarion isn't dead. For me, it is. When Willard was alive, it was read and respected. Now, the advertising, the circulation's gone. I, I've poured three years of trying. I, I, I have nothing more to give. Well, you're tired and it's been a hard day, huh? We'll talk about it again tomorrow. No. Mr. Tabor's won the war. He can have the clarion. But for a price, he'll have to pay well for what he wants. Do you want Tabor to have the clarion? No. But I haven't the strength or the money to fight him. Oh, I know. You're going to offer to lend it to me because you knew Willard and because we're all friends. No, Ben. Mm -mm. I'm very tired and all I want to do is rest. Well, what I was thinking... You know, how would it be if I were to try to sell the clarion for you? I mean, I think I'd probably drive a much harder bargain than you could. Do you trust me for that? Of course I trust you. Good. Yeah. That's a good idea. And right now, I'm going to take you home. Get some of that resting done. Come on. This is the cash.
cashier's check for the full amount. That's much more than I ever thought Seth Tabor would pay. Oh, then you're pleased. More than pleased. I'm wildly happy. <laughs> this calls for a celebration. <laughs> Coffee and rum cake. Cake that won the blue ribbon at the county fair. That'll do you both good. Ruth hasn't been eating enough to keep a bird alive. And Mr. Cartwright's been staying at the hotel where the food would choke a goat. I think we're being summoned. I think so, too. But first of all, you've got to sign this bill of sale. That's for the buildings and the equipment. And, of course, the goodwill. You signed right there. Goodwill? <laughs> There's not much of that left. Oh, a lot more than you think. Mm -hmm. There you are. Good. I can start packing now. Yes, you can. Oh, thank you. You're, uh, gonna leave Gunlock? Yes. And I'm glad to go. With Willard gone and the paper gone, I... I can hardly wait to leave. Thank you for making it possible. My pleasure. An old friend. A good friend. There's no one else like you. Trunk's already at the depot. I walked down there myself just to be sure the Draven didn't forget. Really wasn't necessary. Well, I like to be sure. Now, you look up my cousin Ellie in Sacramento. Of course, the very first thing. Ellie knows everybody, and she'll see to it that you... Good morning. You think for one moment. Ben Cartwright, you lied to me. About what? You told me Seth Tabor was going to buy the clarion. Well, actually, you uh, you told me that. I just didn't correct you. Deliberate evasion, and that's the same thing as a lie. Oh, no. Ben, the clarion's dead. There are no subscribers, no advertisers. I could at least persuade myself to let Tabor pay for the bits and pieces of what he destroyed, but I cannot take money from you. <laughs> well, Ruth, you already have. Look, the only thing that's left is the name out front. Tabor, Tabor has this whole town terrified. They're, they're even afraid to read the clarion. Well, I'm going to try to change that. You're going to? How? You don't know the first thing about running a paper. Ruth! The stage will be leaving in a few minutes. All right, I'll be there in a minute. In two minutes. You know, I'll never understand it. Any man who owns a pencil thinks he can run a paper. Ruth, they're loading passengers. The stage will be leaving. All right. Let it go. What about your trunk? Well, take it off. I'm going to help. Well, I, I, I couldn't ask you to do that. You didn't. I volunteered. Well, you may not want to when you find out what I've been doing. Now, Ruth, here's a copy of the first page of the paper that you were going to put out. And here's a headline. Jeb Anderson builds a new barn. Uh, the Hermione Ladies Club is having a box social. Not exactly earth-shattering. It's local news. I spelled all the names correctly. It's the first rule. People like reading about themselves. Well, I've written a new headline. Henry? Yeah, here it is, Mr. Cartwright. I set it up in tight and ran off a proof. Thank you. Honey. I guess it wasn't your brother who was mortal sick. It was the clarion. Well, now that you have a man editor, you think it has a chance to live. Well, no offense to you, ma'am, but if it don't, it's going down fighting. What do you think, Ruth? Ben, you can't print that. There are libel laws. Seth Tabor will sue you for everything you own and get it. Truth is an unassailable defense against a libel suit. You 
you sound exactly like Willard. No, I should. It was Willard told me that. Yes, sir. If you've got the story, I'll set yes, it up tight sure and run it off. Story? May I read that? Corruption, malfeasance, and dishonesty were demonstrated in the Court of Justice of the Peace, Seth Tabor. Well, I must say, Ben, you don't beat around the bush. Newspaper man. Ha! You don't even know how to spell. Gently now, gently. Yeah. Good type is like a fine woman or a spirited horse. They both need gentle handling. Didn't know you're a horseman. I'm not. The man who taught me was. What he told me, I'm passing on to you. All right. Gently does it then. A notice tacked on the post office wall. Hmm? All government land in Gunlock County will be open to homesteaders 60 days from today. Hmm. Hmm. Well, that's that's almost two thirds of the country. That's over a million acres. Oh, from Washington. Addressed to the editor, the Clarion. Oh, would you open it, please? A copy of the same announcement. What's the letter say? Washington would like it printed on the front page of every newspaper within a thousand miles of Gunlock County. The land commissioner in charge will be named later. Hmm. Pretty important job for somebody. Whoever he is, he'll be the most powerful man in this part of the country. If he's not the most honest, he'll be the richest, too. <laughs> That's why Tabor wants a clarion. So he can use it to get himself appointed land commissioner. I sent a telegram to Washington. I got a friend there, he might be able to help. I'm bringing in men to homestead these claims and to do the assessment work. And then uh, sell them to you? For a dollar each, yes. Dollar a section for land. It's better than buying horses for a dollar a head. If that's your idea of a joke, Mr. Leake, I don't like it. Now, Sheriff Knox's holdings will be here. Mr. Cotton's will be here. And Mr. Leake's, if Mr. Leake is still with us, will be here. Now, between us, we'll control the water in this whole wide area. And having the water, we'll control another 10,000 acres of fine grazing land. If you're appointed land commissioner, Oh, I will be, Mr. Leak, before the week is out. Hey, Mr. Tabor's got friends in Washington taking care of that for him. Mm-hmm. And who's going to take care of Cartwright? Why does that concern you, Mr. Leak? Because Cartwright owns the clarion now. And he's carrying a ten-horse grudge. And he just might use it to wreck your pretty little wagon. Don't bet on it, Mr. Leak. <laughs> Come on, the fire's out. Let's go. Get these buckets back. Thanks for your help. Glad to help out. Better, Dobbs? Much, thanks. <sighs> All that work, gone. Oh, and what have I done to you? It's not the end of the world. 
Not yet. Don't you see? We can't. There's just no way. After I got the wagon loaded, I went over to the livery stable to get the team, and when I got back, the wagon and the papers was burning like fury. Oh, forget it. It's all over now. Thank you, ma'am. I needed this. Mr. Lee tells me you had an unfortunate accident here, a fire. I'm sorry to hear that. Well, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Tabor. Oh, we lost a few papers, but uh, we'll survive. Come in. Yes, well, at the auction, I did get angry, and for very good reason, I believe. But I did. <laughs> I did take advantage of you. And I'm here to make that right. I'll pay you whatever you say your horses are worth, Mr. Contract. Well, you've already paid me, Mr. Tabin. As you yourself pointed out, the transaction is legal and binding. One hundred dollars a head. I'm afraid the transaction is closed. All right, Mr. Cartwright. We'll forget the horses. But Gunlock does seem to be in a lucky town for you. Until now. Tomorrow will be much better. I'll give you a large profit on a short-term investment. I'll buy the clarion at four times what you paid Mrs. Manning. Four times? Mm-hmm. Why? So you can use it to uh, make sure that you're appointed land commissioner? The job calls for a man who knows the problems of Gunlock County, and I do better than any man alive, Mr. Cartwright. <laughs> I should think you do. You created most of them. Yeah, you sure did. You know, you run Gunlock County like it was your own private kingdom. Mr. Cartwright, if you or the clarion try to stop me, your next of kin will regret it. I suggest you read tomorrow's edition. I already have. I'm sorry, Mr. Cartwright. I never should have let him get a look at this. It's all right, Henry. It certainly is. Henry, lock up that press. We got a paper to put out. I thought I told you to keep an eye on the clarion. Cotton's watching it. It doesn't take two to watch one building. Besides, something you ought to know. I saw half a dozen men carrying around pieces of that paper. Folks around here want to know what was in it that got it burned. You think that bothers me? It should. There was a lot about you on page two. It tells how you got your start driving one of Ace of Butter's freight wagons. How you got to be wagon boss, then partner. How you bought the freight line from Ace's widow. After Asa hanged himself. That part was news to me. That's only part of the story. The smallest part. Cartwright is getting to be a nuisance. What did you expect? You find him for contempt, you stole his horses, and you burned his papers. So I did. If you'd let him get a decent price for his horses, he would have been long gone by now, and you would have owned the clarion. We all make mistakes, Mr. Leake. The difference between us is that I don't worry about it. I'll still own the clarion. I don't see how. There's a lot you don't see. Without Cartwright here, I'd be taking a helpless widow's last possession. Even men who know better would side with her. Oh, Cartwright. He owns timber, cattle, horses. The biggest ranch in Nevada. You no know, people enjoy seeing a big man cut down. It's human nature. When I take Cartwright apart, all of Gunlock County will stand up and cheer. It'd be a good trick if you can do it. I can, and I will. Yeah, a bullet would stop him. But it would also get you hung for murder. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. The only way I see is to burn that whole building. Press, paper, type, and all. Mr. Leake, there's some hope for you yet. Sometimes you do fall over the obvious solution. <laughs> Thank you. Mr. 
Purdy, it's nice to see you again. Has been a while. Too long. It's too late to get your ad in tomorrow's clarion. Next week will be fine. That was Mr. Purdy, Gunlock Mercantile. He wants to run a half-page ad every week. Oh, good. Yeah. Purdy was only the first. Next came Hob Kelly. Kelly's livery stable came in and bought an ad. Bought something. He left money on the counter. All right, Mr. Leake, I guess we're going to do it your way. Cotton, you stay here. Knox and I will give you a hand. Three of us will be left. You're so happy before. What changed you? After what happened to the last issues, I'm wondering if these papers will get to the post office, the stage. They will. We're going to load them right outside that front door in broad daylight where everybody can watch. and light your fire. Do what I tell you, Mr. Lee. Cartwright over to the jail, and it'll be a legal killing for trying to escape. No, Mr. Tabor. Oh, Sheriff, and you cooperate, and you'll have leaks land in your own. You'll be a very wealthy man. Well, if there's nothing else, Mr. Cartwright, I guess I'll head home. Fine. You have a good night's rest, Henry. Thanks. Good night. Good night. Well, these will go to the president and the cabinet members. They get them. Oh, they will. You had an answer to your telegram. No. I'm afraid Mr. Tabor has that telegraph operator under his thumb. I don't think that message is ever sent. I was afraid of that. But these papers will get there. I'll take them to the post office in the morning myself. See that they're stamped and put in the mail bag. Mr. Tabor wants a government job. I don't think he's going to interfere with the mails. What was that?
You, uh, kill your own man, huh? Not me. You. Bad blood between you. He gave you a lump on the head, so you split his skull open with a pistol butt. Killed him. Speak up, Sheriff. Tell him. You're under arrest. Murder. Hand it over. Won't hold up in court, you know. Any court, not even yours. Get him. Get him! Move! Drop those guns. <laughs> well, ma'am, you better drop your gun. You're helping a murderer to escape, and that's a felony, ma'am. Drop it. Yes, ma'am, I'll, I'll drop it all right. <laughs> Right. Wasn't my idea at all. Oh, Pam. Oh, thank God. There never were any bullets in that rifle. I'm terrified of loaded guns. I do what? And no thank yous. I hate thank yous. All right, but I'll have to bite my tongue. Wish I could stay. I do too. But you, you have the Ponderosa and I have the Clarion. As a favor, can't we keep in touch this time? Of course. I'll write you regularly. And of course, I'll be keeping in touch with you regularly because I'll be reading the Clarion, which I'll be reading every Wednesday when it comes to mail. Toby, out, Sheriff. Let's have a look at the killer. Vandy Williams, now look here. This man is not a killer until he's been convicted, and this trial has only started. Judge and jury gone to lunch. Come on, fetch him out. We'll help you walk him to jail. <laughs> Give him wings, Sheriff, and they'll make a fine bunch of vultures, won't they? And if we'd take you to jail, we'd just be leading a parade. Gibson, better put him in the cell in the basement. I'll have some food sent in. Here you are, Mr. Cartwright. Volume one, Yankee Meadows. Thank you, Kelly. It's just what I need. This courthouse is built over the Galconda mine. I sure hope they don't intend to do much blasting below us. I thought they weren't supposed to blast near the surface. Well, they're not. Well, it's just a bigger one than usual. Uh, thank you, Kelly. I'm glad that's over. Yeah.
Ellie, happy birthday, darling. And a surprise. A picnic basket prepared by the chef in Nevada Club. Chicken and wine. And I've, uh, I've made a special reservation for the Willow Grove. Back in the opera house. Oh, I'm delighted. But I thought you had to be on the witness stand. I was, but I've been dismissed. Oh, Mr. Cartwright, Jonathan Pike, my fiancé. Mm, yes, of course. We've met before. Yes, we have. How are you? Well, I'm not at my best. It's not very pleasant to sit there knowing that your testimony is going to put a rope around a man's neck, even though it's richly deserved. Well, it's nice to see you again. Johnny, Bristol Toby did kill Mr. Wilderson. Yes, I know, but it's... It's all over now, and I can think of better things to talk about. Mr. Cartwright, will you be all right? Yes, I'm fine, thank you. What's he doing? Putting him in that cell there, sir. Come on, step lock, please. Liar! Mr. Cartwright, help me! Liar! They haven't hold me yet! Johnny, did he hurt you? No, he didn't touch me. Thanks, Mr. Cartwright. Now, if you behave, I'll take those cuffs off so you can eat. to do. Let me out. Boy! Get him! Let him out! Shut up. You can't, Mr. Cartwright. He's a murderer. Mr. Cartwright! Shut up! You're making a mistake! I need something for a lever. Underground for ten years. All right. Peacock, put your weight on this. Come on. Put your weight on it. Sammy? This is Connor. She was in the county clerk's office. Well, Doc Hill's going to take care of the injured in the saloon just up the street. I think that's a lot. Well, did you go into the basement? No. Well, I know that there's my deputy down there and his prisoner and the lady that's taking care of the records. And whoever else might be down there. Get down there and check, will you, please? Please stand back, folks, please. Then give me a hand, will you? 
Yeah, I'll be glad to give you a hand. Not you. You're not in good condition. All right? Walk her right around, and we'll block this porch off. She's got a broken arm, Doc. Bring her right over here. How many more are trapped down in there? Oh, I don't know. I heard it cave in and just started running. Uh, easy. Easy. Uh, Hoss. Uh, Hoss. Cut right. I gotta tell him. Tell him what? I gotta talk to him. <laughs> you better get Hoss caught right over here right away. Right, Doc. Get a blanket. That's so. all. He's something to put under his head. Oh, good. Good. Logan, you all tied off? No, Roy. That old mine shaft down there must be caving in. That whole floor seems like it's sinking, don't it, Bob? Bob, go see if you can find Arch Tremaine. You know, Galconda's superintendent, and get him over here fast. He really understands about these cave-ins, and we need all the expert help we can get. Right. Oh! Oh! Mrs. Connors wants to talk to you. It must be important. Doc said come right away. Fine, I'll tell you something you can do for me. Ride out and get Candy and little Joe for me, will you? Sure, Oz. Food's not your property. Keep your hands off it. Ain't the condemned man entitled to a hearty meal? Take it easy on it. We may need it later. We could be here a long time. They may never come. Eat up. Hey, Peacock. Why are you trying so hard to have me hung? I told the truth about you. And you're a liar. Now, shut up, both of you. If you say so. Is it getting hard to breathe in here? Or am I imagining it? A little. It'd help if we uh, turned out some of the lamps. It's a good idea. Let's put them all out. I'll accept that one. The one back there. Major cave ends in this stove here between the 100 and 200 foot level. That's 
almost directly under the courthouse. Man, what about the basement? There's four people down there. Well, there's bound to have been a lot of slippage in through here. Those vault walls may have held. They may not have. Any survivors down there, we won't know till we get down there. That's going to take a while. Well, why ain't we after it? I mean, what are we doing just standing around here? Well, I know how you feel, Hoss. My pa's down there. I'd be raising Cain, too. Pa's down there. Yeah. Paul and three others are down there. Oh, aren't you over there getting them out? Well, we're going to, Joe. We got to go about this careful. I'll tell you what I need. I need five or six good men to work with me in the courthouse. And the rest of you'd be more help if you'd help stack that wreckage out in the street. Well, you got three right here. Well, fine. How about you, Charlie Rutledge? You bet. Now, and again, I might be able to use that Irish luck of yours. Yeah, and me, Barry Williams, ready for duty. Hogan, you'll do. All right, that ought to be enough for now. Let's get going. Well, I'll start tell him. I can, I can help. Not now, Barry. You're in no condition. No, 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 but I'm never sticking stone in there. The air's bound to get a bit stale down here. Have us out of here in no time. What if they don't realize we're alive? Then they'd have no reason to hurry, and it could take them days. They're not going to assume that we're dead. They'll get us out of here. Oh, well, we can't around. be sure. Oh, Callie, what? Callie, Callie, darling, don't worry. What Mr. Cartwright says. Shh. Hey, darling, don't worry. They can't help but hear that. We'll be out of here in a few hours. If nothing stops the clock. And you didn't work in there anymore. We don't know how strong that floor is. Stairwell. We've got to clear this wreckage out of the center of the room. Otherwise, the whole thing's going to cave in and kill everybody down there. Now, listen to me, all of you. This wreckage here in the center of the room is dead weight hanging over that basement vault. Now, the support beams may already be gone, or it may just be holding by a hair's breadth. We cannot put any more weight on the center of this room. We've got to clear out this wreckage first, then we'll get to the stairwell. You all got that? What do we do now? Like I said. Clear out the center of the room first, and then we get to the stairwell. Now hop to it, but walk like you're walking on eggs. Joe, the support beams under the section may be gone, so take it easy. Rest you men form a chain and get this wreckage out the street. Mr. Carter. 
God, right? Look. That smoke means the blast set the timbering afire in the mine. Better move the death. Give me a hand. Let Mr. Cartwright leave the blanket. Yeah. Easy. Easy. Tear that blanket into strip, that's a good lass. It might even keep us off from choking to death on the smoke. Well, I can finish here. You'd make a better signal man than the one we've got, right? enough. For once, things have come out even. <coughs> oh, it's so hard to breathe. Is your really that bad? It'd be easier if you breathe shallow. Don't try to move too much, all right? The fools, they must all be deaf. Joe Morrissey. Come on, let's get him out of here. What's he saying? Well, I don't know. Mr. Cartwright, can you make it out? By the time my sailing days, I could make out the Morse code pretty good, but it's too fast for me now. They're asking how many of us are alive down here. County clerk showed up. He'd been over to Carson City. And as near as I can figure out, that leaves seven people still missing. We found five of them. They're alive in the vault. What about Paul? Well, four of them are all right. One of them's bad hurt. They didn't say which one. Sheriff, those people need air, and they need it bad. We've got to get that compressor over here from Galconda and get the compressor and the pipe and some line in there. Since I can't work in the courthouse, that sounds like a good job for me if somebody would show me where it is. 
Tell you something else we need, Sheriff. We need some thin iron rod. We're going to have to punch a hole through that wreckage so we can get an airline down there to them. Blacksmith shop. That's the best place for that. Well, yeah. let's get going. Hey, Clint, rustle up the team and wagon go with Hawk here. Mr. Cartwright, he's having trouble breathing. I don't know whether it's the air or, or if he's worse. Get, get, get one of those lights put it on It'll be an hour before they can start to pump any air. Tell them it's got to be sooner. We won't last. Yeah, it's not that bad. It's thick and it stinks, but I've worked in mines where it's been worse, Peacock. Don't call me Peacock. I'll call you anything I like. And I'll tell you something else. I'm going to make you admit you lied on the witness stand, even if I have to tell you a limb from limb. Do you understand me, Peacock? Don't call me that! Get out of now. Get now. Both of you! The trial will be settled up in that courtroom, not down here. If we get out of it alive, it'll we'll be... We'll get out of here alive. They're going to have to come down that stairway. We're going to have to clear the top of that. Come on. See if we can get clear of away some of this stuff right here. They want to punch an air hole. They're asking if we're willing to risk it. Yeah, yeah. Yes, yes. Well, let's, let's get some cover right over there. All right, Joe, go ahead. Hey, come on, come on. So let's step out. Give me the sledge. Joe, try her again. Tell you one thing for sure, we're never gonna get an airline down through this mess. What do you do now? I don't know. That fluid may not be plugged up all the way. To be the end of it. I hope so. It's not too bad. I've been in worse cavings. Johnny, he's not here. Uh, here I am. Are you all right? Yes. Where were you? Well, uh, a piece of the ceiling fell down, knocked me in there. Mr. Cartwright told you to take cover in here. What were you doing in there? Uh, stop bickering, both of you, will you? Callie, take care of Gibson, will you? All right, let's, let's clear that debris away. 
If this is miners' work, you try and it'll all come down on your heads. Look, you two stack and I'll do the clearing, all right? Put the compressor right over here and the wagon right next to it. Let's hurry up. We only got about a half hour of daylight left. Looks pretty good, Hoss. Yeah, how long it'll be before we can get some air down there to him? I don't know. I'd say at least 15, 20 minutes. alone because I'll bring it all down on top of us. I can move it. I heard you were a timbering man. I was shoring, boss. Best on the Comstock. Spent three years. warned old Wilderson that the stopes under us here were going to cave in. You know what thanks I got? He fired me. For warning him? Old Pinch Penny Wilderson? He didn't want to spend money on new timbers. And he didn't want me around reminding him that he had to put them in. <laughs> to hear the peacock tell it, I killed Wilderson for firing me. That's a lie, Mr. Cartwright. The truth is, I thanked Wilderson on the spot. I was tired of slaving in a mole hole and only seeing the sun one day a week. I wanted to go back to sea. I was a sailor like you. Aye. A man should be able to see the sun, Mr. Cartwright. Cartwright's the finest man I ever met. I've, I've been thinking, what? How can I can help you get him out. I know every sick and stone in the building. Look, the most help you can be, Manny, is go somewhere and sleep it off. No, 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 I mean it, Hoss. I know every stick and stone. Right. The other way. as they'd let me. Look, I'm as ugly as a wagon load full of sin and yet the peacock's as pretty as a $20 gold piece. Who would you believe? Jonathan! Jonathan! That look on his face, he scared me. Hold it! threatened to kill me. You heard him. Put down the gun. Johnny, please, no! Come <laughs> on. 
Get out of there. You keep on at this. Oh, you got your beam and bring it all down on top of us. Come on, get up from under there. You'll be killed. Did you hear that, Peacock? Mm-hmm. You and me are going to be killed. <laughs> go. 30 seconds and it'll all come down. 30 seconds. So if you want to die with a clean conscience, now's the time to talk. Well, I don't want to die. Then talk straight and fast. Let him go. <laughs> you keep out of this. I know you didn't kill old Wilderson. You haven't got the guts to kill a mouse. So you lied for the man that did. Now, who was it? Oh, I had to lie. Who's going to put me in jail? Did you hear that, Mr. Cartwright? Yes, I heard that. Let's sure up that beam. Come on, push it. Come on up. Come on, Eddie. Boss? Boss? I'm sober, boss. Look, look, I've been, I've been soaking my head under the pump, see? Yeah, yeah, well... Near it, anyhow. Listen, Tremaine won't listen to me, but you got to, boss. I helped build this building, every freaking board. And I helped build a coal chute from the alley wall into the basement. Oh. Benny, they ain't a coal chute in all of Virginia City. Oh, no, don't be so persnickety. A coal chute is a coal chute, even if it's firewood that you chuck down it for the stoves. And I'm telling you, we cut one through the alley wall. You didn't go into the basement. But how come Paul ain't found it? I ain't sure. But I think they bricked it over when they put their records down there. Show me. Somewhere around here. It's been a long time, boss. I knew there had to be a thief in that front office, Mr. Cartwright. Little rotten timbers I was getting. Well, I wasn't the only one. Who forced you to steal? Tremaine. He was stealing, too. Wilderson caught him. So he killed Wilderson. And then he... he Forced me to lie to put the blame on Toby. Callie. You must understand. Please understand. No. And I realize, Jonathan, that I have never known you. Sheriff? Yeah. Worst comes to the worst. I don't want murderer on my tombstone. You just take it easy. Look, I'm not hurt that bad. Hurry up, I want to get back there. Not hurt that bad. One rib broken and two cracked. I don't suppose you'd listen to reason and not go back to work. That's right, I won't listen to reason. Just hurry up. All right. Go back if you have to, but you be almighty careful. I'll keep an eye on him, Doc. Come on, let's go. Wait just a minute, young fella. You're not going any place till I've had a chance to look at that knee. Well, that's a waste of time. It's nothing the matter with my knee. Sit down. Let him look at it. It's nothing wrong with that. Oh, come on. Sit down. Go on. All right. All right. I'll Thanks, be right over. All right, Doc. Hurry up. Yeah. Legs not hurt that bad. Well, let's just take a look. Besides, I was hoping maybe we could keep Joe here with you. Oh, come on, Doc. It didn't work, did it? Candy. You've seen that cave in over there. Yeah. Well, how much longer do you think they're going to be able to survive? 
We're pumping air in down there now. Are you sure it's getting to them? I just thought it might be a good idea if... somebody else found Joe's paw. Few minutes. We you mean you walked off and left this thing out of water and let it blow itself up? All right, all right. How long will it take to fix it? I had the parts half the night. In the meantime, those people down there are going to run out of air and they'll be dead before we can get to them. Thanks to you, mister. Well, there's still a chance. There's a coal chute down to that basement. A coal chute shoot in Virginia City? Huh? Well, I don't believe that. Well, I do. We're going to find it. Come on, Benny. him how long he's going to be, and I'm getting no answer. to set this place on fire. We found it. We found it. It's all covered up. See, but you can make it. Oh, well, Cali, come on, get up there. No, Gibson first. Oh, get Gibson up there. Get up there quickly now. Tell him to send down a rope. Sure. I certainly do. Come on. All right, start pulling up, boss. 
Easy, fellas, easy. Take it easy. Easy, Adam, now. He's hurt. Don't jerk it. Go slow. Is that him, Candy? She marries him then after. Yeah, that ankle's really bothering me, isn't it? I don't even remember twisting it when I got out of that cold shoe. Who's that for? Just what the doctor ordered. Hot water and Epsom salts. Well, the doctor may have ordered it, but I didn't. Yeah. No, wait, wait a minute, wait a minute. Paul, that's the only way to treat a sprained ankle. Hot Epsom salts, water, and no water. Wait, 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 wait. This ankle's not sprained, just twisted, that's all. Just twisted, not sprained. Sure. That's why Joe and I had to carry you from the buggy, right? Well, you may have had to carry me. That's true, but it's just a twisted ankle. I don't know. Why don't just we because just, it's twisted doesn't mean I have to have it. off the slipper and the sock, and we'll take a look at it. It's not going to hurt anything. Come on, take it easy. Easy. I'm going to go as easy as I can. Easy. Something that isn't too bad, Pa. It sure is hurting. Easy. I'm doing it as easy as I can. All right, take a look at that. Well, just look at it. It looks pretty bad. It's pretty swollen. Now, the hot water isn't going to hurt it any. <clears throat> All right. Pull that, pull that pot right over here. Nice and easy. Ah! It ain't hot. It's boiling. Well, that's, that's what the doctor said. Hot as you can stand it. I can't stand it. Which is worse, the cure or the illness? Look, I know it hurts, but it's better than being in a cave. At least you won't have to see that place anymore. Why is that? Why was that? I was thinking about that. You know, I still need that book of records. That volume one, Yankee Meadows. Well, not right away, you're not. Not with this ankle. Well, that's that's what I was thinking. Since I'm not going to be able to walk for the next two or three days. Yeah, somebody ought to go in there and get it out of the debris. Yeah, sure glad you volunteered. You know, I, I really don't think the ankle's that bad. I mean, it's, it's not a sprain, it's a little twist in it. It's sprained. It's a sprain. It's, it's my sprain. Yeah, I figured it would be. 